Hey everyone, it's Stacy here, and I am finally making the video that everyone's been asking me for for like forever um, about Olympic weightlifting and how you get started and what equipment you need to get started and what movements and technique things you need to master, which is like a broomstick or a PVC pipe before you move on to a barbell and then before you load that barbell with actual weight. So first, I'm going to go over what equipment you need to have. So first and foremost, you need to have a good pair of Olympic weightlifting shoes. These are from probably 2003 or 2004. They are Adidas. They have a wood heel and wood heel is extremely beneficial because it's extremely stable and it is an elevated heel, which also means that mechanically I can stay a little bit more upright when I'm squatting down and that is extremely helpful in a sport like Olympic weightlifting. So there are many types of shoes out there. Um, Nike has some, Reebok has some, Asics has some, and then there's some, a lot of other brands out there. So you need to find what works for you and your body and kind of try out a couple pairs before committing to one. Um, and I've had these for quite a while because I love them. So secondly, you need to have knee sleeves. So these are Ray-Ban. It doesn't really matter what kind you get. I just prefer them. Um, so I wear these in both the snatch and clean and jerk, but not how you would think. So for snatching, I actually wear them on my shins because I scrape my shins. I keep the bar really close to my body and I tend to scrape my shins. So these help protect my shins from scraping them. So I use these on clean and jerks a little bit differently. I put them actually at my knees like you're supposed to. And I only really like move them up around like 85% of my one rep max. So I don't ever rely on them. But yes, I use these for clean and jerk and for snatching and for squats, of course. Next, I have wrist wraps. So wrist wraps are important. I've had many wrist injuries in my life. I've had two wrist surgeries. Um, so these really help support my wrist and give a little bit extra stability when I'm in that end range extended position, which is really kind of the position you have to be for snatching and clean and jerks. So these help out. I definitely recommend getting a pair. Um, really doesn't matter the brand, but this is the brand I use. Next, you need a belt. So there are many kinds of belts out there. There are buckle belts and there are Velcro belts. I use a buckle belt because it's just a preference of mine and I don't use it for snatching, but some people do. And I only use it for clean and jerks above 85% again, so I don't rely on it. And I have a different kind of belt for doing back squats and front squats and deadlifts, which is a little bit thicker. It's more of a powerlifting belt, but this is the hook grip belt is the one that I use for actual Olympic weightlifting. All right, next we have wrist straps. So these have been loved and used a lot. I don't use them a ton, uh, my fiance does, but these are helpful if your grip gives out, which it will sometimes do. And if you're doing heavy pulls, you're gonna wanna use something like this so then you don't have to rely on your grip and you can really just strengthen your back. Okay, next I have Lift RX. Uh, this is tape, thumb tape. So I wrap my tapes specifically for snatching because the grip is a little bit wider out. So I feel like I don't get as good of a grip on the bar. So this really does help me get a little bit more of a secure grip when I'm doing Olympic weightlifting. So if you're a beginner, I recommend picking up some tape because you're going to feel like you're dislocating your thumbs and that you're just like ripping the skin off of them. And this is going to be helpful until you kind of get past that beginner stage. Last but not least, chalk. Olympic weightlifting is all about your grip and like I said if it gives out then you obviously aren't going to make the lift so having some chalk handy is going to be clutch for Olympic weightlifting. Okay so today I'm going to talk you through um, the snatch and the clean and jerk but first we're going to go through the snatch. I got my broomstick here you can use a PVC or a wood dowel doesn't matter, but I definitely recommend using something like this to get started and really learn how to master each position before picking up a barbell. So, how we measure to see where we're are in the right position. If you have long arms, you're gonna be wider. If you have short arms, you're gonna be smaller or more narrow. Um, I'm about right here. What I tell people is when your knees are bent, the bar should be in your hip crease. This is my hip crease right here. So, hip crease, hip crease. Obviously, if I was here, I'd be way too low. Here would be way too high, right? Another way that some people say you can measure is by pulling up the bar and making sure you have a 90 degree angle overhead. I'm about there, about there. So this is kind of the position that I want to be in. 
So we're not gonna go through the hook grip today because that's kind of an advanced thing, but let's just go through the five different things that I used to use or the steps I use before I do a full snatch. So step number one, I like to start with a hang high pull. So you're gonna be here, you're gonna be above your knee, your shoulders stay over the bar, your hips stay back. You go nice and slow all the way until you meet your thigh. Once you meet your thigh, you go up on your toes and you pull your arms up, okay? From the side, that looks like this. You're here, booty goes back, shoulders stay over the bar. You go nice and slow, slow as you can. Find that hip, your knees are still bent, pull up. And faster it'd be looking like this. Faster it'd look like this. So step number two, what I like to do is have people work on a high hang drop. So here, and they just drop to that power position. So from the side, here, knees are splayed out, shoulders are over the bar. And from the back, you can see that I am really pushing up into that bar. So you wanna have good stability in your shoulders. And if you, if you just let the shoulders sink down, that's not gonna be good when weight gets heavy. So you need to have strong, stable shoulders to keep up pushing through the shoulders and making sure they're active. Okay, so that is step two. Step three, you're gonna combine step one and step two. So here, start from the knee, knees are out, I'm gonna go nice and slow, all the way until you find your hip. That makes sense? From the side. Knees are out, booties back, shoulders over the bar. Nice and slow, find that hip, jump, tight shoulders, down. So that was step number three. Now step number four, you're gonna do the same thing you just did for three, but go down into that full squat position. So you're here. Nice and slow, I want you to always keep going slow, find that hip. And it's weird not doing these in the Olympic weightlifting shoes, but since I'm just demonstrating, it's okay. Here, shoulders back, stay tight, nice and slow. Find that hip. Okay, once you master that one, that was step number four, you're gonna go all the way from the ground. Or if you have weights on the bar, it's gonna be like mid shin. So you're here. I do a dynamic start, so I draw my butt and come up. Nice and slow, shoulders stay over the bar. It's weird not having shoes on. Okay, here, oh wait, no, here. So here, I do a drop start, but if you just bring your chest up and you go nice and slow, keep the shoulders over the bar, keep the shoulders over the bar. Okay, that's the first five steps that you do with this before you pick up the barbell and add some weight.